Brian, you will never guess which generation has the lowest mortgage rates. New survey from Realtor.com. I know you already read the notes to all of our watchers. Uh, Are you surprised by this too? Mm -mm. Gen X and millennials have, on average, the lowest mortgage rates in the entire country across all generations. The silent generation, the boomers, Gen X, millennials, and Gen Z. Millennials and Gen Z have the lowest mortgage rates on average across all groups. So it's crazy because I, I, I forget that the millennials run, you know, all the way to 43 and some of them started buying in t- 2011. So some of them are a lot older than you. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay, okay. But, <laughs> but, but when I start seeing Gen Z is like, Hey, they're, you know, hitting the 27. I'm like, yo, like, okay. Like I, I mean, I am getting older and these past few guests that we've had on, you know, the agents, they've all been 26, 24. And I'm like, yo, I used to be the young one in the room. Now I'm kind of like. The second is the young ones in the room. That's like being that's like being at the senior lawn when there's a freshman on campus. Get out of here, okay? Oh my god, <laughs> you and I are a whole generation apart. <laughs> Anyways, your point. My point is that you know I'm not I'm not surprised because I feel that you know with all the data that's been coming out and that we're now knowing that you know the younger generation is leading the force in taking out mortgages and buying properties. Right. I think that's you know it's it it's refreshing to hear that because <clears throat> as a matter of fact, you know, a lot of people always say rates are too high rates are too high but now it's like yo the people that got in when they were you know rates were affordable they took advantage of it and it's showing and here's, here's what i want to make sure I, I tell everyone in context of our conversation because we're talking about averages which is of course is generalities and there's people who have a much much lower rate than this and people that have much much yeah, higher of yeah, course yeah. uh so for for the gen x and millennials who have who share the tie at the bottom with the lowest mortgage rate it's four percent on average which is fascinating but then at the top, the highest mortgage rate is Gen Z. So your your generation, which is four point nine. Um, millennial. Which is four point bar- you know, yeah. barely. Yeah. You so, barely. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. You're I know you're straddling that millennial uh, Gen yeah. Z. I apologize. That's all right. My point is that Gen Z has four point nine percent. So the difference between the lowest average and highest average is 0.9%. Now, the reason this is important for me to mention is because we had been doing VA refinances at 2.25% back in 2021, 2020, 21, some, you know, right around there, right? Maybe it's not going to 22. Now we've done some loans at 7.5%, which is a huge 5% 5% difference plus. I know we had a 15-year loan. We did like a 1.99, I think, oh, yeah. three years ago or something yeah. like that. That's nuts, too. I remember that. But for the purpose of this conversation, a 30-year fix, somewhere between, let's say, Two and seven and a half is a massive variance in the short amount of time we've had this run up with rates. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But even despite that, the average between the lowest and highest generationally is actually very small. 0.9% is very small because right now, if you had a loan at seven and a half and you could get a loan for six and a half, you'd be like, yeah, 1%, it might be worth it. Mathematically, it still may not even make a difference. That is, let's say, of, of great value in your it may, may not it may not be significantly enough to validate the expenses doing the refinance it, it is i mean if you break it down it's probably going to be anywhere between like maybe like 180 180 bucks yeah depending on your loan amount you know, yeah of course amount, yeah so think about it 180 bucks in savings to then redo the appraisal break everything in it it, it it makes sense if like you know you really need the savings but some people are like, hey, well, you know, I could write it out. I'd rather wait till, you know, the savings are like a little bit right. more substantial to then, you know, really tack on mm-hmm. and readjust my loan to then, you know, come lower and lower my payments. Because, yeah. you know, unless you're being smart with it, y- you are going to have a higher loan amount if you tack on your closing costs into your loan when mm-hmm. you refinance. But you could also pay them off, you know, out of pocket and, you know, have your loan amount at what it is. But regardless, your payment is what's going to be the biggest thing that comes down. So as long as you're able to have a savings that makes sense for you, some people have a 1% saving. They're like, that's good. I need that's that enough. saving. I'll come back when I could do another 1%. Other people are like, eh, 200 bucks. Uh, I can, I, I'll be okay for another year. I'll wait till I could do two, two and a half percent. And then it's a substantial savings. Yeah. So I feel that's something that people don't know when they refinance that you are are able to pay your closing costs wrapped into the loan, mm-hmm. but you're also able to pay them out of pocket like when you do a purchase. Yeah. A lot of people get thrown off because it's like, hey, why did my loan go up if I'm refinancing? Where in reality, you you know, you're tacking in your your closing costs, but still paying lower on interest. Yeah. And this, th- so the subset of this is that with the uh, higher purchase price amounts that have been seen in the last several years, also with elevated mortgage interest rates, they have the highest monthly payments. So, uh, while the millennials are tied for the lowest mortgage rates, they are saddled with the highest monthly payments of any generation on average due to larger loan amounts of right. origination. I mean, that's not 
like rocket science right there. It's just, it's what it is. Uh, the takeaway for me in this article, this graph is, at least in this part of the article, is that uh, I, I think there's a, just, there's a potentially distorted view, especially online, that, well, it, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's impossible to get a home. If I'm a certain age, if I'm young, well, we debunked that last week. 40% of mortgages that have been taken out in 2023 were with, what, Gen Z and millennials. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's that part. Um, mortgage rates are too high. Well, people are still buying them. And yes, this average even reflects that in that generation, the mortgage rates are higher on average than the others. I think there's also something to be said that's kind of tucked underneath these averages where you can't see equity in here. But mm -hmm. I know, hands down, boomer equity and silent generation equity is substantially higher because typically on hand, on average, they've owned their home for years or decades longer than anyone who's gotten in the last three or four years. And so the equity play may be it may so far overshadow the mortgage rate that doesn't even matter. And, and, and you know, it's crazy because, like, I I was at an open house this past weekend. Uh, you know, an older gentleman walked in. You could tell he was, you know, either in the boomers or silent generation. And, uh, you know, he's talking about wanting to remodel a garage or convert the garage, have a second garage, but do something with this house, right? And I asked him, oh, like, how would you go about, you know, doing that? Would you pay for it all yourself? He's like, yeah, I'd probably pay for it. I'm like, does your house have equity? He's like, yeah, I'm like... My house, I bought it like you know years ago. I haven't done anything to it. I'm like, why wouldn't you use your equity? I don't want to pay any interest. Wow, I don't yeah. want to pay any interest. Right. He's like, and I'm like, oh no no, I'm like I'm like not to offend you or anything. I just a lot of people when they get into these projects, they utilize their equity to be able to leverage you know the upfront cost. Like, so I don't want to pay any interest, and you know that's something that I notice a lot with the young older generations that it's very 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 tricky when they are paying certain interest, certain payments. They if they don't like the payment, they don't like the rate. They're not gonna do it even mm -hmm. if it's a good good deal mm -hmm. quote unquote if somebody if they don't think it's a good deal if they don't want to do it they're not going to do it yeah and opposed to generation like younger generations they're like oh i'll leverage my equity mm -hmm. i'll use my equity yeah it's fine like that's money I, I didn't have like i could put that to use yeah same thing how they're more lenient to wanting to tap into their 401 case like we spoke about last week mm -hmm. which i was here on the show yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah tapping into retirement to pull money out or, or, or so take, taking early withdrawals and then Making that it's a lot down different. Uh, it's a lot different dynamics, but also on this next the graph that I see about mortgage payments by generations. Yeah, of course, the older generations have such a lower payment. Right. But that's because although they had higher rates, their purchase or their purchase the prices were a lot lower than where we're at right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, for you know generations that are older, they have higher rates higher purchase prices and those purchase prices never stop, you know, leveling down since they started going up. But go go back and look at the look at the graph real quick. Go flip back to the other page. What's super interesting is millennials have the highest monthly payment yes. and the lowest rate, right? And then go to Gen Z, one bar to your right. Look at Gen Z, they got the highest rate, but their monthly payment is lower. Isn't that weird? That's so weird. That's super weird, right? Because okay, well if the rate's high, my mortgage payment's gonna be high. Because my loan amount was high. But in Gen Z, what's I don't and I don't know where this is coming from, but on your red graph right there, you see they have the highest average mortgage rate. But then in the pink chart, you see that their pink bar is the third in line. The millennials have higher payments on average than Gen X, they and they a have rate. a higher payment on average than Gen Z. So somehow Gen Z has a higher average mortgage payment and a lower monthly payment. Uh, sorry, a higher mortgage rate and a lower monthly payment. Interesting, hmm. huh? Do you... I don't even know, huh? <laughs> well, well... well I know, well, I know it, it comes down to loan amount. It's, the answer yeah, is loan yeah, amounts. But, <laughs> <laughs> the answer is their loan amounts are lower. Um, but again, that could be for a lot of different but reasons. Also the, the time in the graph of when millennials started buying to when uh, Gen Z started buying, Gen Z started <clears> buying at a higher purchase price than the lower tier of millennials. So, right. So, I, yeah, but yeah, it goes back to loan amount. It goes back price. to loan amount. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah, I'm not saying, I'm not yeah, saying no. that to, to, to dig at you. I'm saying, like, it, yeah, it goes back to the loan amount. But yeah. what, what, what's so curious is that last week we covered how they're pulling money out of retirement in order to buy a house yeah. or make a down payment. And it, I, I'm, I'm bringing this up because it makes me wonder how much of that is baked into this little pink bar right there where we see this lower monthly average payment because they've taken money out of over here to apply it over here. So even though my rate might be higher, my payment is lower. 
that is super intriguing because we keep talking and selling this idea that there's been this cultural shift and there's this difference of opinion. And, and you know, the younger generations are looking at real estate uh, through a way different lens. Yeah. They just buy the house and raise your kids and have a white picket fence and live there for 50 years. They're not looking like that. Mm-mm. And even and even despite maybe some, let, let's say, less traditional methods for acquiring a home, mm-hmm. such as pulling money out of retirement in advance, right. it, r- despite that, they're still actually, on average, looking better than the millennials, which is super fascinating to me because they're the newest kids on the block doing it. So, I know we're, we're, we're calling the unluckiest uh, generation. Yeah, but... <laughs> I think you're going to end up being uh, the luckiest. 